What is up my BA fam and welcome back to the Brave Angler. Today we're going to talk about going pro. In my last video, uh, I'm sure some of you have guessed that that video wasn't necessarily intended to make my declaration that one day I am going to be a professional bass angler. Um, a lot of people took it as that tomorrow I'm going to the Bass Opens, I'm going to win that tournament, and then I'm going to be a pro by next year. That is not what I was saying. And uh, a lot of you understood that. A lot of you understand that this is a goal. It's a dream. And the whole point of this series is to show that you don't need to have all the money in the world, disposable income necessarily, to follow this dream. Like... I'm going to be completely honest guys like right out the gate all right i'm like i said in my last video i'm a police officer i make less than 60 grand a year and most of that goes towards bills my exposable income goes towards fishing making these uh youtube videos and all that kind of stuff so that is the financial situation as of right now but like i said that video wasn't about i'm going pro tomorrow and i'm gonna throw hundreds of thousands of dollars at this, you know, on a whim. That's not what that video was saying. All I was saying was making a goal. Like that was my goal and I will not quit until I get there. You know, obviously we have to work from the ground up. You know, we're doing local tournaments, then bass affiliated or BFLs, um, which is MLF affiliated leagues. And we're gonna work our way up because there is a point that I need to prove not just to myself, but to everyone else. And that is, you don't have to come for money to chase this dream, right? Now, if it definitely helps because this is a play to pay sport. Pay to play, pay to play sport. Say that three times as fast, dang. So if you have the money, right? Yes, you can go fish the Bass Opens tomorrow. You pay your little membership fee, you pay your entry fees, you can go fish it. Absolutely you could. And that's where the whole elitist sport kind of came into play, I feel, is that because it is a pay to play, um, some of it, obviously you have to have some sort of skill to you know, make it to the elites, but for the most part, even on that, you know, that just under the top tier, you could go do that with absolutely no experience if you have the cheddar. So a little fun fact about me that not a lot of people know, even my coworkers don't know, is I actually have a master's in business. I chased that avenue for a few years and realized like being in a corporate office and that kind of stuff was just not who I am. Like I like to be outdoors, I like moving around, four walls. I'm not claustrophobic, but I guess a lot of you guys could probably relate that it just, I don't like being boxed in like that. So I became a police officer because it gave me the freedom I need. It gives me the days off I, I want to be able to go out and fish. You know, it, it gives me more family time. And that is why like, I don't really go around gloating that I have a master's degree. It's cause like, it just wasn't for me. However, there's a lot of skills that I picked up while I was in college and, you know, acting in those high corporate roles. And that is understanding analytics, understanding sales, understanding marketing and brand management. So now that we have my background kind of out of the way, I know that wasn't very in depth and maybe one video, like I'll go more in depth about my background, how I was in the military, you know, went to college, owned my own business and so on and so on. But the whole purpose of this series is to show that you can earn your way there. Like I don't have a lot of disposable income at this time. However, I have a very niche set of skills that every company wants, right? Cause here's the thing, all a pro fisherman is, is a salesman that gets to fish. People are paying them for their ability to drive sales. So a lot of people kept commenting about uh, bolts or whatever. And uh, I'm not saying anything bad about that dude. Like I don't, I've never really watched him on the brass tour and I don't know how good of a fisherman he is. I don't really pay attention to all that negative space, but he would even say it himself that he did not take advantage of social media, you know, building his brand. Because like the thing is, is like when you build a brand, 
you know, and you have people that trust what you're saying, because let's face it, the only reason that people watch YouTube fishing is to get better at fishing. You know, even even if it is the people that uh, like if you watch Lojo and all them, you're looking at, wow, he was able to catch a fishing off a fish off a ten dollar pole. What did he do that that fish bit? Right. Like or you're looking at instructional videos like Tyler Reels fishing or you're looking at Ben Milliken for like big swim bait. You know, like you're just I think a lot of people don't realize that everyone is looking for that thing that is going to catch them fish. And that is what all these fishing companies bank on when they sponsor these pros. Is because when someone sees that so-and-so won this tournament using a loose fishing reel, they're going to go out and buy loose because they know it's good. They know it can handle the fish, so on and so on. But at the end of the day, it's driving sales. That's the whole point. So step one was actually not buying the boat. Step one was building a brand, starting the YouTube you know, figuring out where I fit in here, you know, what kind of demographic, you know, like you guys, right? Like, I didn't know I would get as much support as I did when I first started this YouTube channel. I, you know, it's crazy. Like it's, it's been only six months and we've already got almost 2000 subscribers. And I think it's because I'm like so many of you, like I'm just an average American, you know, middle-class guy. And you know, that has these dreams of, you know, accomplishing something that most people believe that you have to be rich to do. And that's not the case. But the sad reality is at the end of the day, this YouTube channel is a tool to build a brand, you know, build a community that everyone benefits from. Like me personally, I love making these videos. It gets me out fishing. You know, it allows me to interact with you guys. You know, I get so many tips from you guys. That's making me a better angler. And it's a very mutual beneficial proposition for both myself and you guys. And the support you guys have shown us has motivated me so much. But that was honestly step one was just creating a brand. You know, people are seeing who I am. You know, I'm getting people behind me. We're building a community. Like that is step one, right? But now, how do I get to the next step? Step two is actually building a foundation, you know, honing our skills as an angler, starting to make these uh, connections with businesses, like through networking, you know, tournament fishing and lower levels, getting off on different lakes, getting used to practicing, you know, so on and so on. And that's gonna build our foundation and our reputation as we start winning these smaller tournaments, as, you know, people start seeing us everywhere you know, and as the YouTube channel grows, like the foundation is probably one of the most important parts outside of actually the branding. So step three, after we do that, we're gonna be seeking sponsorships, you know, uh, not endemic at first, um, probably non endemic, like local, you know, to help pay for our entry fees and, you know, really get into the nitty gritty of developing those multiple revenue streams so that we can make that transition into the Bassmaster Opens and all that kind of stuff when that comes along. And then step four, of course, is gonna be execute. You gotta catch them. You know, like you gotta, you gotta put yourself in the forefront and put yourself in the fight you gotta be promoting the brands that you made a dedication to. You gotta be driving those sales. Like, cause like the thing is, is like when you have that kind of data with the non-endemics that you drove this much sales for this non-endemic, you know, um, through extracurricular activities, not just bass fishing, it gives you way more ground to stand on when they're like, well, what are you gonna do for us? Cause everyone's gonna put them on their jersey. Everyone's gonna put a sticker on their boat and truck what are you gonna do for them that's actually gonna drive sales? And at least if you do that lower section first, you'll have the data to show them, this is how much I generated for this company, you know, that took a chance on me. Now imagine what I could do for you when you already have such a large name and then you also have your, your brand at this point you know, I have this many subscribers on YouTube. I get this many impressions, this many views. And 
like I said, all of this builds up together in creating these deals, creating these revenue streams, which will allow you to fish these tournaments. And then of course you gotta you gotta keep catching them on these tournaments. Like I said, you can't drop that part. That is a major part of it. And you know, like, but at the end of the day, when it comes to actually getting the money to go, it is possible to do it without having family money or having all this money set aside. Like, yes, you can do it that way, but I am much more of a proponent of creating partnerships and us accomplishing something together. I don't think that I'm gonna go pro tomorrow, guys. Like, that that was never the point of that video. It's just, I am going to get there. And I wanna bring you guys along for the journey so that if you're aspiring to do the same, like, like I said, this, this series is not going to be me fishing. It is going to be me showing you how I did each one of these steps, how I connect with companies, how I create a beneficial proposition with these companies, how I market those companies, you know, to make yourself a master in sales, which is really what these companies want. And the better you get at that, the more money they will give you to go out there and fish these tournaments. That's what this series is about, is I'm gonna show you guys step by step how I did everything completely transparent and and how I create my different streams of revenue that will eventually pay my way through the Bassmasters opens and onto the Bassmaster elites. That is the whole point of this series, guys. So for all those that are gonna look at this and you don't know how much, I know exactly how much it costs. It costs $2,000 to fish and opens. It costs $4,500 to, fish a uh, Bassmaster Elite, and uh, that's just entry fees. You also gotta think travel, gas, food, lodging, like, guys, I know. I, kn I know how that works, okay? It's, uh, like I said, like, we didn't take this lightly. We have a plan, and we're gonna execute that plan, and we're gonna bring you guys along uh, with the ride. That way, if, uh, you guys are aspiring to do the same and you like me and you know don't relate to having you know big bags of money just laying around there you know hopefully you can follow these same steps and get to where you want to go our next video in the series is going to be the foundation and i'll actually go in depth about what exactly goes on in that step and how we're gonna accomplish each part of it and any updates. And then when we get to the next step after that, you know, another video will come out. If you guys are following along in our Abu Garcia spinning reel giveaway, today's code word is gonna be the plan. You know, cause uh, you gotta go in this with a plan. If uh, you're going about the way I am, you have to have some kind of plan in place. Otherwise, uh, it's gonna make it way harder on yourself. But thanks you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Now go catch a fish.